Welcome to the Messenger Inquiry Gridiron Report, sponsored by Cranel Home Furnishings and Carpets Unlimited. I'm Scott Hagerman, and with me is Jim Pickens. And Jim, normally we start out looking at looking back at the city teams from last Friday, but we kind of had an interesting situation happen this past Friday, and we're going to go straight to the video, and that is Ohio County High School ended their 25-game losing streak with a 39-36 win over Hopkinsville. What's your immediate impressions of that game? Well, I'm really proud of Ohio County for hanging in there, Scott. Um, <clears throat> this is a team that's continued to work hard. We've noted this a couple of times, that this team has played hard through adversity. They continued to do that, and they really made a lot of great plays in this game. They were behind. Uh, they scored the last two touchdowns of the game to win this game. They scored with 16 seconds left in the game to win 39 to 36. And uh, I'm just so proud of them because uh, they're an example of what sports is all about if you persevere. And uh, you just have to tip your hat to Coach uh, Todd Houston and the entire Eagle staff and, 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 and roster because this took a team effort to beat a team like Hopkinsville. One thing I want to point out is that this is not chopped liver they beat here. This is a team that's won multiple state champions, yes. uh, cha multiple state championships through the years, and a team that has a great tradition, a storied tradition, much like Owensboro, much like uh, Christian County and Bowling Green. So uh, this was not a cheap victory at all. This was a very good victory over a quality program uh, historically. Well, we've been saying the last couple of weeks, I know the Central Harden game and, and the Owensboro game, we've been talking about how you definitely, while you know the wins weren't being put up on the board, this was a team that you felt like was getting better every week. And if anything, was playing harder every week, yep. which kind of goes against the norm. You know, teams usually in this kind of losing streak, it just kind of gets worse and worse every week. But this team, I think you saw the improvement coming. But I'll be honest, I, I didn't anticipate them beating a Hopkins. Game. No, I didn't either. And, and uh, you make a good point there, Scott. And that's just – uh, persevering and this is not just in games either this means that they're doing it in practice because you can't just uh, turn the switch off and on for games that means they're continuing to work hard and you know one thing coach Houston mentioned early in the year was he just wanted this team to get better each week you know and then we'll see what happens right. it was like that and, and that's what they've done you right. know and I mean they went through five more vic uh, five more defeats this year to start this season but Boy, everything came up roses Friday night. You just can't help but feel good about them. They, I know that they feel good about themselves, and they deserve to. Yeah, they absolutely deserve to. Cody Murphy, another tremendous game for him, 206 yards, four touchdowns on 28 carries. Joel Skipworth comes in with 111 yeah. yards on 21 carries. Derek Griffin has a solid game, both running and passing. This is a team that is definitely right there that we may not be done well, yeah, hearing noise right. from them the rest of this year. That's right, and I think that the, the key I wanted to mention here with regard to Ohio County is that uh, uh, they showed the type of balance that you have to have. And I don't just mean passing and running balance, but Skipworth picking up 111 yeah. yards and scoring a touchdown, he gave something. He, he gave Hopkinsville something else to think about other than Cody Murphy. Right. And, and then Griffin picked his spots. Yes. Uh, including the game winner, because yeah. you would think that either Skipworth or Murphy would make that play, but guess what? Derek Griffin made it with 16 seconds to go, and see, that shows you where they've grown as a football right. team. Right. Well, there's no question they need to take some of the pressure off Cody Murphy. Absolutely. I mean, he, he's been option one, two, and three for a long time now, and yep. anything they can do to even out that uh, distribution of the ball is going to be a big positive Agreed. for them. Agreed. Let's go to the Apollo Davis County game. And in a way, I would say this one was as surprising as the Ohio County Hopkinsville game. We both come into it thinking this is going to be, you know, a 10-7, 12-6 oh, yeah. kind of game. And Apollo just comes out roaring 37-7 at half, end up winning 47-7. How do you explain what we, what we saw Friday well, night? Well, I'm not sure you can explain it. I, I'll try my best to, to give you what I, you know, my best scenario here is to what happened. I think that what happened early in the week, Apollo made some changes personnel-wise. Uh, uh, there were some uh, young men who uh, uh, Coach Bates uh, made the decision to dismiss them from the team. Um, whatever, I don't know why uh, or any, any of that, but, but what, whatever happened, this was a different Apollo team that came to play Friday night, no Scott. This team, uh, I'm going to make this statement, and it's a bold one, but I'm going to make it because uh, it's, it's a true statement from what I've seen this year. I have seen no other team 
play as hard as Apollo played Friday night in that, any that, game. Well, that says a lot. That says a lot. The stat that stands out to me, Elijah Dillard, 139 yards on 11 carries, including rushing for two TDs. I mean, let's be honest. Apollo couldn't run by us a lot of this season. No. And now all of a sudden yep. they showed that – They've got the will to yeah. push people off the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be huge for them. Yeah, and, and what it does, it kind of talks about the potential. You and I mentioned for three or four weeks there to start the season, we were trying to figure out what's wrong with Apollo. We felt their personnel was better than they were showing. What happened on Friday night was every single player played with energy. And I tell you what, Elijah Dillard, I think, is going to be a different football player the rest of this this season uh, this kid kept going I mean you had to hit him four times to knock him down in this game he he hurt Davis County in numerous ways through the air on the ground uh, Jewel had a great game six of eight 178 yards and a touchdown Ross Lee had a great game including a 53 yard touchdown run and I need to mention Nathan Hawkinson this kid you talking about a kid that played like he was shot out of a cannon this kid did an unbelievable job he threw a touchdown on an option pass and then returned an interception uh, 75 yards or so for a touchdown and he was all over the field. This was a different Apollo team. It right. looks like a team that is a threat in the postseason now. I'll just say it. Well, that's the good out of this game. And now here, let's go to the flip side of it. <clears throat> now, granted, Apollo has a good D. And mm -hmm. we've been saying all year long, yes. Apollo's D was probably better than they've been getting credit for. Mm -hmm. They've just been put in bad situations mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. because the offense couldn't get going. But granted, Apollo has a good D, mm -hmm. but what's going on with the Davis County offense? I mean, this is two straight games yes. where they've just not been able to do anything. Yeah, and I mean, I think actually, you know, Coach Kimbrell at the, at the post-game interview that I had with him, I think he was really at a loss with regards to his offense. I mean, um, it, it's one of those things where they were, they were led by a young quarterback, but he got sacked six times in this game. It wasn't, you know, Darius is a really good player. He's, he's one of the best they've got, but he was running for his life all night long. They've got to reassess a lot of things. That they may have to, to uh, assess some personnel uh, issues. I don't mean about dismissing kids. No, but, 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 but they're not getting anything done on the ground. They're, they're, that's their they're, that's their biggest they're gonna issue. Have to, they're going to have to uh, really break this down yeah. from the line to the backfield, everything. They're going to have to reassess because, no, they got, they got not much done at yeah, all. No. no, not at all. Let's talk about the other 6A game involving one of our teams, Muhlenberg County, Henderson County. 48-7 okay. Henderson. Yeah. No surprise there. No. Muhlenberg, where, where do you see Muhlenberg at this point in the season? Well, um, Muhlenberg has uh, been a little bit of a disappointment yeah. to me, and I think that, uh, but you know, I think I never, never would have expected him to win this game. Don't get me wrong, but but I think that uh, I felt like Muhlenberg would be more competitive with teams like that at this point. They, they just, I don't know. It, it's an interesting deal because uh, last year. Uh, I still am remiss to count them completely out because last year they surprised us when they played Davis County, and, and maybe that could happen again. But at the time they had Aaron Johnson, right. who was a real, uh, you know, what what you call, he's just a, he was just a winning type of player, and, and he sort of willed them, I think, to yeah. victory that night uh, in a lot of ways. But, no, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see. I hope that they can turn it around. But, no, they're, they're going in the wrong direction, no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back to talk about the big 5A matchup that pitted Christian County against Orangeboro, and we're also going to take a look at some playoff scenarios. <laughs> 